Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you knew, my name is Bobby. Guys, first and foremost, thank you so much for your feedback and your support. After my last religious reaction video, I asked you guys if you want to follow along on my religious search, if you want to explore Islam, the Quran, etc. with me, and you guys said overwhelmingly that you would be interested. So today we're going to react to the throne of Allah by, yet again, merciful servant. I personally know very little about the throne of Allah. However, within the Christian apologetic scene, the throne of Allah is used to attack Islam, to be more precise, to attack Tawheed, the oneness of God. Christians say that if Allah is truly one, what's up with the throne? That is already a multiplicity that defeats the argument of the oneness of Allah. With that, they want to justify the Trinity within the Christian doctrine. I'm very interested to find out about this concept. Let's have a look. In no possible way is this video going to show you anything of the unseen world. Viewer understanding is very important. I wasn't expecting that, but thanks for the disclaimer. All the praise is for Allah, who is the author of all existence and the most generous to his creation, while he is also the all-compelling. As I already said in my Quran video, what I absolutely love is that God is addressed first and foremost. All the praise is given to God first, and then we can talk. He is the I love only it. one worthy of our worship, having no partners, no associates, no sons, no daughters, no one whom he must consult, and no one or anything which has any comparison with him. Even metaphysically speaking, if we're talking about a necessary being that is absolute, obviously there is nothing that can share this absoluteness. All the praise is for Allah, who is the king of all who claim sovereignty, the only one who has the right to legislate for his creatures. Yet again, God is the only one that has the right to legislate his creatures. Obviously, because he is the origin of creation. There is nobody but him. He is the giver of life. It makes he absolute the sense. He of death, while death has no effect upon him. He is the ever-living. Because he is the ever-living, the self-subsisting, <laughs> the eternal and the only absolute. I swear I didn't watch this video. All the praise is for Allah, who has power over all things. And there is, in reality, no power and no strength no influence to cause benefit or detriment except through him yep it is he who created this complex world the seen and the unseen the evident and the speculative the earth and all that is on it the editing is on point man and everything that is in it it is he who sent his messengers and prophets Alayhim salam with the common message of strict monotheism, which simply means that there is absolutely no one worthy of worship, no one worthy of our obedience, except the Almighty, the One, the Absolute, and who has no partners. As I mentioned in previous videos and interviews, this concept of absolutely pure monotheism was the most mind-blowing, shocking fact about Islam to me personally, because I didn't expect Islam to be about monotheism. I grew up around Muslims, but I never looked into the doctrine. I never understood that Islam is the purest form of monotheism. The earlier messages which changed the world in the area in which the prophets were sent those editing, messages man. we know have changed and even the prophets who brought them their names are now lost 
We just know in general because Allah told us in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاعُوتِ that is something that I heard before and I heard people speaking about the Buddha and that the Buddha potentially was a monotheist, a prophet as well. From what I personally gathered about the Buddha is that the Buddha was strictly against idol worship. But nowadays, if you go to Asia, you see huge golden Buddha statues. So obviously something went wrong. And to every nation, a messenger calling people to worship Allah alone and to avoid the worship of false gods. This, this message you find within the Old Testament as well, I have to say as a Christian. Essential message has been preserved in Islam in a way that it was never preserved before. Not because the message was different, because it was the same message but because of the fact that there would be no other prophets who would come after Muhammad ah, Man, this is so simple, but I never thought about it. I was really questioning why would have Islam preserved the message? But if you look at Muhammad as the last prophet, it makes all the sense in the world. Therefore, that message now had hmm. to be protected. That's so simple. It had to be preserved in a way None of the earlier messages were preserved. I'm honestly, yet again, mind blown right now. I never thought about this simple explanation. It is a very, very strong argument, by the way. I will relate this. What you say, you have come to know 40 years back. And what you call the Big Bang is already mentioned in the book, which I read, the glorious Quran. It's mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya. Chapter number 21, verse number 30, which says, Avalam yaral lazine kafru. Do not the unbelievers see. Anna samawati wal arda. Kaan atarat kanfutak nahuma. That the heaven and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. What you're talking about, the Big Bang, I try to imagine. The psychonaut and philosopher Terence McKenna said, Science operates under one premise, grant us one miracle, and we explain the rest. The miracle being the Big Bang. The Big Bang is not a sufficient explanation for anything. It is simply an arbitrary starting point of the universe. Compressing a spring. I push it. It's just a belief. Closer and closer and closer together, so it's smaller and smaller and smaller. And I've stored a tremendous amount of energy in that spring. And when I let it go, it bursts out, it bursts out, it bursts out. The creation of the universe, which you came to know 40 years back, is already mentioned in this book, the glorious Quran, 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that in the Quran? So the atheists will say, maybe someone wrote, maybe it's a fluke, maybe it's a guesswork. A human being, regardless of who they are, or where they are, or what they do, will have this curiosity. They'll want to know, why am I here? How did I get here? True. And do I have a purpose? And if so, what is it? The only one who would really be able to answer that question would be the Creator Himself. If there is a Creator, it would be up to Him to tell us why we were created, and what He expects from us, and what this life is really about. Allah has shown the people from the time of Adam until right now has shown the people what he wants from them. And it's a very simple thing. And that is that worship be for him alone without any partners. In fact, we know this life to be a test from Almighty God. That's why we're born and that's why we die because there has to be a beginning and an end for us to be tested on. That's the powerful. next life, after this life, no one will ever die again, a bad person or a good person. Even psychologically speaking, if you have God as your only priority, everything else will fade in comparison. There is the saying, love the creator and not the creation. I truly believe that this is the only way of a healthy life because not worshiping idols goes way, way further than just bowing down to statues. Anything in this life can be an idol. You can make money an idol. You can make women an idol. You can make fancy cars an idol. And therefore, I believe that is a very, very powerful message if we direct our focus only on God. Both are brought back 
and they continue to live in the next life, either in good shape or not so good shape, depending on how they did on the test. The worship of the God of Abraham, that was what was taught by these prophets. The Lord of the Arsh and Kursi, we're talking about the Lord of the worlds. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We're talking about the Lord of the entire universe and beyond. The entire universe and beyond. You know, we live in this dunya and we are fascinated with this dunya which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed has created in a beautiful manner. We're fascinated. There are over billions of people which live on this dunya at this moment in time. Over six billion people that live on the dunya at this moment in time. This dunya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so big that there is space in this dunya for billions and billions and billions or more people. But what is this dunya in comparison to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created out there? This dunya is insignificant. This dunya is meaningless to Allah. It means nothing. It is worthless. So worthless, compare it with the sun. The sun is one star. You know more science than me. You'll be able to tell me better. Take this planet Earth and you place it inside the sun and you will be able to place 1.3 million Earths in the sun. With this point, I have to disagree. Quantity doesn't equal significance. Just because the Earth is so much smaller than the Sun doesn't mean it is not significant. I truly believe, especially if we take the perspective of this life being a test, we have to look at it as something significant, something that God willed with a purpose. 1.3 million Earths in the Sun. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. The sun is one star, one star. There are stars out there which are millions of times bigger than the sun. You need, you tell me this, that you need millions and millions of stars to make one galaxy. And then you tell me this, that there are zillions of galaxies out there. Let me tell you on top of this, my friend. After this, whatever you see above, whatever you see above, when you raise your head and you look above, whatever you see above, the zillions and zillions and zillions of galaxies, let me tell you, this is everything there is within the first heaven. Everything there is within the first heaven. And Allah the guy repeats himself a little bit too much for my taste. Is the creator of seven heavens. Seven heavens. And the distance between the first heaven and the second heaven is 500 years. You know, the distance that can be covered in 500 years, at what speed? Only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. But it will take 500 years to get from the first heaven to the second heaven. 500 years from the second to the third, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, fifth to the sixth, sixth to the seventh. Every time it will take 500 years. I don't even think anybody can truly conceptualize what those seven heavens mean. It could be seven dimensions for all we know. You know these seven heavens that we've just talked about? In comparison to the kursi of Allah, they're non-existent. They're meaningless. Rasulullah has given an example in a hadith just to give us a little bit of understanding with regards to the seven heavens in comparison to the kursi of Allah. Take a ring from your finger, take it off, the small ring that you have, and place it, let's say, in a desert, the Sahara Desert. It's the biggest desert in the world. You know that ring that we take off from our fingers and place it in the Sahara Desert what, what comparison is in between the ring and the Sahara Desert? Nothing. Nothing. The seven heavens is the ring and the Kursi of Allah is the Sahara Desert. After the Kursi of Allah, you have the Arsh of Allah. You have the Arsh of Allah. Again, Rasulullah has given, has explained, so just so that we can understand. Take the ring, place it in the desert. This time, 
the ring is the kursi and the arsh is the desert. What is the kursi in comparison to the arsh of Allah? Nothing. Then you have angels which carry the arsh of Allah. Their heads are in the seventh heaven and their feet are in the lowest earth. My friends, then you have the Lord of the earth. Vision perceives him not, but he perceives all vision, and he is the subtle, the acquainted. This is exactly what I mean when I say that I don't believe that any person truly can fathom God, even in the description of the seven heavens and the throne and above. Ultimately, the Quran explains it best by saying vision perceives him not. So therefore, no matter how big it seems to us, no matter what kind of picture we want to paint, heaven one, five 500 more years, heaven two, 500 more years, the desert, the ring, etc, etc. Point of the story is that vision perceives him not. I honestly find that one passage out of the Quran so much more powerful than anything that the Imam here had to say. With all respect, he is beyond the size of Allah. Exactly. What Allah is, exactly. the greatness of Allah is beyond the comprehension exactly. of my little mind. Amen. Exactly. Quantity, size, all of those human conceptualizations are just that. Human concepts. And God transcends all of them. This is the being that you and I are messing with. We're not messing with him. There is no sleep within God. It doesn't exist. There is nobody else. Because time is an illusion. It's only by His grace, otherwise we don't understand anything. There is no fatigue in God, it's a human concept. Fatigue is a lack, there is no lack in God. Alright guys, and this is it for today's reaction video, a very very long one, thank you very much for making it until the end. Always honest reactions from me, the first half of the video I enjoyed very very much, the second half with Sheikh Ahmad Ali, not so much to be honest. Kind of repetitive and oftentimes for me personally besides the point. Ultimately, God cannot be described with human conceptualizations. Either way, let me know in the comment section if you like this type of video and please let me know as well if you want me to continue on sharing my journey with you. If you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.